Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another Unity 3D multiplayer first person shooter tutorial. Is anyone still stunned that the networking went so well last time? I, I still kind of am in shock. Anyway, so now that we've got our characters sort of vaguely moving around, um, there's a couple of different ways I could go for the next step. We could start doing the shooting thing, but I think I should probably tackle one of the things that is always oh, so rough on me in that it's, it's creating proper um, models and animations for characters. I'm really bad at that. I can actually make pretty decent levels. I mean, this thing I put together in like, what, 10 minutes while explaining things, which is no problem. Um, actual characters is, is certainly a rough thing for me. At some point, I'd like to do a tutorial that examines it more, uh, but for now, I'm going to have to leave that out because what I would create would be a monstrosity. Uh, I actually have tried. I've gone and, and made a whole version of this uh, this video, basically, where we try to create our own characters, and it, it did not go well. And so for the interest of keeping things moving along, we're going to take the easy way out. And what are we going to do? So um, there are a handful of free characters available um, either on the Asset Store or if you, through a few different places, right? So if you search the Asset Store, inside of Unity. I don't know if you've ever visited. Well, no, you must have. We discussed it already in the first tutorial. I forgot about that. Um, it's been a couple of days since the last part. So, ooh, ooh what is this? Oh, I'm gonna have to check that out later. So if we go into our 3D models over here, and then characters, and then say humanoids, then what we can do is take any of these lists and just sort by price, and it's gonna put the free stuff up at the top. And um, there's actually a few handy ones in here that are free. And one uh, one thing in particular, the Mixamo company, they are really highly integrated with Unity in all kinds of ways. They go to all the Unity conferences and they're great for characters and, and animation. They do have this soldier pack on here. Now, this pack is just the model. Just the character model and the texture do come in two versions, both the soldier and the SWAT version, uh, which slightly different models and slightly different textures applied to it. I don't believe they come with animations, but this is actually a pretty good start for us. Let's go ahead and download this uh, this character pack. If you don't like surfing the asset store, and I can, uh, I can certainly agree with anyone who might say that it's a little bit rough at times, the other thing you can do is actually, if Mixamo is what you're inter interested in, you can go to their websites. And if you go to characters here, and then on the left-hand side for the categories, you can go to free. I mean, they've got a lot of characters, a lot of different types of characters. Some cost different amounts of credits. I don't know what the mapping of credits to dollars is. Um, they also have some sort of subscription for like over a thousand dollars, where for the next year you get everything on their site for free kind of thing. But they do have some free free ones, which is here. And you'll see in here, like Army Guy is in that list as being free. Uh, the big thing that Mixamo actually does is animations. And we might use that. They also have an auto rigger. If you make your own character in say Blender, you can bring it in here to help uh, rig it, which helps. And uh, they do have a handful of animations, but they don't have that many free ones. If I just toggle on the free, um, these are the only free animations here, which are good for maybe testing a couple of things, but not a whole lot. That being said, uh, there is the uh, female basic locomotion pack, which isn't bad. So you get various walk cycles, um, and that, actually, that wouldn't be a terrible start for us. Hang on. Hang on. Now, I, I know this is actually available on the, uh, on the Unity store as well, if we do a search for that. Let's take a look at the free characters again. Is there like a female character? I mean, we can use the female animations on um, on anyone, really. But it might make more sense. Like, she looks like a cool ninja spy person. Maybe we should pull her in. Sophia. Let me check the Unity store over here. So um, what we can also do is go down to animation, and specifically bipedal animation. This is in the Unity store. Sort by price. Mechanim Warrior Anim Free, but that's, yeah, Mechanim, not Mixamo, which is actually something else we're going to talk about. This raw mocap data is pretty good. There's a, I think it was from CMU that produced a lot of motion capture animation for free and just threw it all on the internet. It's a little rough to use. You do have to do a bit of massage and get everything in there, but there's a shocking number of animations uh, available in this. Yeah, so it's not in here, but if we go back to the website, um... Or is that motion editor? What, what kind of motions you got? Idle, move, jump, straff. Oh, let's check out. Why is it check out? I thought it was free. I'm so confused. What's going on here? Is it free or is it not free? Hmm.
Well, the character is free. But the motion is not. Maybe that's what I was seeing there. Hang on. Why was it presenting it that way? Oh, it doesn't actually say free. It's just no price is listed. I think that's... It just fell off the uh, the end of it there. I was gonna say I'm, I'm I'd be surprised if they gave all these animations away for free. Okay, let's let's just head back to what we've got going on over here. So we have imported our soldier character pack in there. Yeah, everything is nicely organized in this group. So I'm actually gonna take this folder. We're gonna put it under imported and keep it organized there. So we've got um, we've got the FBX of the two guys, so we can use those, which is probably what we want to use. Uh, and then we've got the uh, the materials and the textures and everything set up. All right, good. So let's go and find our player, right? Under player stuff, resources, we've got our current player controller. Let's dump that in the world somewhere and hit F to zoom in on this guy. So we've got the player controller. It's got the graphics object here, which is simply this, um, this cylinder, right? Or this capsule, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'll delete the capsule. Right, So everything on our player controller is still there, including the actual capsule collider, because that was part of the route. It's just the actual visuals are gone. So now let's go back into our soldier character pack. Let's grab our soldier and just drop that onto our player controller. So our soldier, the soldier is now our graphics pack. And um, everything looks good. He's at zero, zero, zero point. He stands on the ground. Everything looks fine there. Let's say the only thing that's not quite ideal necessarily is the rig and the animation type. So let's let's talk about that briefly. Actually, that's one question I had not answered for myself. Let me go and double check to make sure that this, whoops, not generic, revert, uh, humanoid. Let's make sure, before I go on any further, that this um, this figure actually works with mechanism. And then I'll explain like what the heck all this is. Where'd my configure go? All right, something is going crazy. Why is my design, my display not the way that I want it? I'm gonna go back here. Don't save this scene. Now, go back to the character soldier pack, grab this soldier, configure this mesh. There we go, okay. Uh, I'm, let me just do a double check that everything, dance, 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 all right. All right, so issues, things to talk about. Let me get out uh, good old paint over here. And we're gonna talk about two different ways we can handle movement in a unity. So the classic way, the classic way is you have your, your character capsule, right? And the way you move it in the world is you do it as part of a script. So in a script, you have your, um, you'll have your, your you know, transform dot position, position plus equal, you know, some, some speed or something like that that you, we've inputted in there, or maybe we've done something like new vector three spell that correctly, new vector three, where the X is equal to the input dot uh, get, get axis uh, horizontal, right, which is your uh, left and right arrow key, or your A and D keys on the keyboard, or even if you're using a joystick, you can use that. And then the Y is always set to zero because we're not going up and down with this. And then input dot get axis uh, vertical is what you're, or, or, sorry, this should be vertical, no, no, I had that right. Horizontal, because this is your left and right sort of strafing motion. And then for your Z motion, which is your forward and backwards, you use the vertical axis, right? And you just plug it in there and maybe you multiply it based on speed or do some other nonsense. You know, you can do it that way. Or if you're using the character controller, which again, in very classically in Unity, you would do character controller dot move or character controller dot simple move. And if we go into our current setup, and we pull in our player controller over here, and we look at the character motor script. We did not write this script. This is one of the built-in ones. Well, not built-in, but one of the ones provided with Unity for free. Um, and if we look at that, it's written in JavaScript, and it's fairly messy in my opinion. I mean, it's commented, but there's a lot of stuff. Uh, we should be able to find a dot move. There we go, right here. So this is how we actually move. And so it's all handled by the script. Right, which is why our current little capsule guy can move as is. So we're moving some X, Y, Z type of thing. And so our capsule based on this line of code is then, um, you know, is then moving forward or something to that effect. Why is it like that? Why is it no longer a thick brush I had before? 
There we go. So that is uh, that is one way of doing it. And classically, that would be it. And then when you've got a character with actual animations, right? Your stick man. Well, you want it to be that when he's moving forward, he's doing he's doing the run animation. See, these these artistic skills is why I'm not showing you guys uh, how to make in a humanoid character in Blender. And we'll we'll explore it at some point just to ta talk about the mechanics of it. Uh, but don't expect anything awesome from me. Right, so the way you would you would get the legs to move when your person is actually moving, or your guy to go into a sort of a jumping motion when you actually you know hit the space bar and you do your jumping code, which if you watched my you know previous tutorial, you would just you know add some sort of um, some sort of y velocity to your character, and then you put it up, and then you'd you'd be applying gravity every frame, which would eventually bring him back down to the ground. Um, so the way you would do that is you would actually in your script over here, and I don't think this script has anything wired in for animation. And it's got the curves and that's it, yeah. In your script, you would have some sort of call to the animation dot play jump anim zero one or something like that, you know? And if you take, uh, if, if you're running, then same thing, animation dot play, you know, run forward or whatever you've named the animation. So that's how you would classically do it in old school um, Unity. And then the opposite side of things, the opposite th side of things as of Unity 4 is to use a mechanism solution where you go in, in your animation, so in your 3D modeling program, your animation where your guy is running, right? So here, running guy. Um, in your animation, you don't just have him looking like he's running in place which oftentimes that's what it would be. Your guy, you know, your model would just be there and his legs would be swinging back and forth as he ran. In your animation program, you would actually animate him running forward. So, you know, you'd have this frame here and then um, another frame over here, another frame of animation where his other leg has just touched down and now his right leg is behind and, and vice versa. Obviously hard to show in stick figure itis here, but I'm hoping you get into the gist. Whereas you're literally moving the figure along in the animation uh, for one loop. So when you hit play in your, in your animation program, in your 3D modeler, like Blender for example, you'll have your guy literally walking forward on the screen and then when he finishes his animation, he'll teleport back to the start and just keep walking forward. The, walking forward and teleporting like that uh, ad nauseum. Well, and so in Mechanin, with the, this Mechanin is new animation system in Unity 4.0 and forward, in Mechanin, it can use that, that change in the root. Like you've got some root bone, usually you use the hip or something like that, that all your other bones are connected to. You know how the song goes, right? And based on the motion here, it knows, Unity knows how, what speed your character is supposed to be moving as. And so the pure Mechanin way, you in your script, your script for your motion basically has nothing at all in it. And instead you're going to use these, um, these sort of state machine flow charts. And your script is just going to be um, basically something like, can I just make a blank file? No. Okay, let me move up to the top of this one. Your script is going to look something very simple like, um, you're going to have some sort of animator, not an animation, but an animator. And you can set, um, it's not going to do the autocomplete properly here, but that's okay. You can set a float called speed. And you're just setting it to like minus one for backwards, zero for standing still, or one for all the way forward. To a certain extent. I mean, you can have like 0.3 if you're, your guy's just supposed to be walking a little bit. And, you know, one to full. And what it does with one is it's literally just playing this animation and knowing what the right forward movement is. The upshot of this is that you're assuming that you've, you know, properly drawn your, or properly animated your run animation or your walk animation in Blender or whatever it is, you've done your proper keyframes, their feet will be working correctly and that they won't slide around because the speed that your character is actually moving in the game world is going to match exactly how you animated him to move, which means the feet should really, you know, be properly planted in place. A lot of games, you'll see the running animation happen and your guy will almost look like he's skating, you know, sliding around and that sort of thing. So very little code logic to actually play the animations. Now, doesn't mean you can't kind of do both worlds at the same time. Just because you use Mechanim to handle a lot of your animation um, through a sort of state machine doesn't mean you have to use this root movement. You can still have your script that does something like, you know, say transform.position 
plus equal, you know, my velocity, whatever that's supposed to be, and then use the my velocity uh, as your animator dot um, set float uh, forward speed my velocity dot z for example, right? Strafe speed, uh, oops, speed which you would use as your X component or something like that. Um, if my velocity dot Y is greater than zero, then animation dot set bool or boolean, I can't remember if it's bool or boolean, to jumping to true. We're gonna see what all this means very shortly when we look at the mechanism stuff, because this is what we're going to use. We are actually gonna use the mechanism stuff to control our animations. So it's gonna be um, a lot less code a lot more sort of visual design for emotion, but it just requires a slightly different paradigm shift. And with that in mind, actually, we are not going to be using the character motor script uh, anymore going forward. Uh, it was great to sort of rapidly develop what we were doing, but we are going to be moving past that very soon. So let's rewind a little bit. So we've got our, uh, our player controller over here. Whoops, can I not uh, zoom in on this guy? There we go. So we got our player controller over here, and we just dragged the model in there, which is great, but I wanted to check a few things on the soldier pack again. So again, I've got the soldier here. This is the one I've just imported. It's an FBX file, which is just a, a very standard um, model character uh, format. Um, let's go to textured instead of uh, textured wireframe here, make this look a little bit better. And so you've got your import settings. You, you've probably played with these import settings before for different things. For example, even our world, we played with the import settings for that to say that, oh, it needs a, a collider, you know, generate a collider, that sort of thing. So with this character here, we actually don't really have to do anything much on the, uh, on the model pane itself. This is all gonna be perfectly peachy and fine, I think, for us. In the rig setup, this is where you choose whether you're going to use the legacy animation system or the new mechanism stuff. And basically, the, the what it's going to come down to is if there's going to be an animation component or an animator component. Animation is the old legacy system. Animator is the new mechanism system. So um, if you choose legacy, it's the old school way, which is still still works fine. And it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's more code centric and some people prefer that. Um, although there's certain things you can't do with it. And then the new mechanism system is either one of these two. And when it comes to an actual humanoid character, you're probably going to want to take humanoid. And the advantage of taking humanoid is if you do the humanoid thing, it'll ask you when to generate the avatar, whether to generate from this model, or maybe you already have an avatar that you've generated on a previous model. We're just going to say generate from this one. And then you can go into this configure screen. And in this configure screen, mechanism, mechanism will try to figure out all the bones that are in your animation. What are they actually supposed to represent in terms of a humanoid model? And you can see here, because this uh, model was was configured to be mechanism compatible everything just worked perfectly and most things you're gonna grab on the unity store will pretty much work like this if you do work in blender um, let me open a blender if you do work in blender there is a great plugin if you go file user preferences go to your add-ons and search for rigify okay it's not on by default but it's included by default you can turn it on this will add, when you're creating your character, let's say you've created someone and then you want to uh, make the bones for that person. So if you go shift A and then add, you can go add armature and you can start from a single bone and you can lay out all your bones for your character and then name them appropriately. And based on the structure of your bones and also the names, when you bring them into Unity, there's actually a pretty good chance that they will correctly determine which bones uh, are represent which bones map to the avatar here. And if it doesn't figure it out perfectly, you can sort of manually tell it, oh yeah, this is a, this is the shoulder bone. I just called it L shoal instead of you know left shoulder or something like that. Um, so you can do that manually. But if you've turned on the Rigify add-on, you can go into Armature and add in this human meta rig. And it, what it's gonna do is drop this bad boy into your, your file. Now, it's not actually intended, the, the human meta rig in the Rigify plugin it does, it's not meant for you to use this guy as is. This model here, these bones, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have a model in Blender, move these bones so that they fit properly inside your model, right? Like on your guy, maybe, oh, uh, your guy's actually a little bit shorter, like that, and you know, his, his arms and your T-pose, you know, you've got your arms, well, I'm not 
really rotating that properly. But you can imagine the situation where you, you know, your your hand, your arm is a little bit higher in the way that you've modeled your guy. So you get everything to fit inside. And then once you're done, you are going to go over here to this this man icon here, the data object data. Yeah, the object data thing. And there's going to be this rigify button to generate the rig. Um, which, depending on which version of Blender you're on, this may not work correctly out of the box. You may have to go to File, User Preferences, under File over here. There we go. Turn on Auto Run Python Scripts, um, which technically has some, some security risk in if you're just like running random things on your system. Uh, but these are all, you're just using, this is just a built-in script, so it's going to be fine. And then if we generate, it's going to create this like way crazy rig. and the next step is actually supposed to be take that old meta rig, way down here, the old meta rig that we just uh, we're just playing with. This thing you don't need anymore. You can just delete it, right? And then you've got this crazy rig, and and it's all got inverse kinematics, and it's actually really cool. The problem is this rig, which is awesome for doing like you know movie style animation in Blender, this rig does not properly map to um, to Mechanim, so. You, there, there's ways to sort of kind of get it working, but it's extra work. Um, whereas if you ignore that, just use this meta rig, this thing will actually map perfectly to your um, to mechanism inside of Blender, which is fantastic. The only gotcha is that when you're actually doing the animation, um, the bones don't really just make more sense to be in pose mode. Um, the bones, you can sort of bend them in any kind of way. Right, you can you can bend the joints in ways that don't necessarily make sense, and there's no inverse kinematics. So if you're working on like a walk cycle, you know, you really have to uh, you really have to go and pose. Oops, everything sort of you know piece by piece, hand by hand, instead of just saying you know sort of vaguely put the foot over here and then figure out the rest for me. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm I'm sort of you know going off on a tangent, but this this will work. Anyway, where were we? Yes, so this, okay. So here we can double check in here that, okay, it looks like all of our bones have been assigned. Nothing is red over here. We can click on the head as well. You know, the hands, um, which technically, yeah, this guy doesn't have individual finger bones, which is okay. Uh, some people do, some people don't. You know, I'm not here to judge. Uh, there's all kinds of people in the world, but no, obviously, you know, some models want individual fingers and some don't really care about that. So we've got that. And the way you can also test to make sure that everything is skinned properly, you go into this muscle mode and then you can sort of go through a few different like built in poses. This is the open and close, which like there's no weird stretching. The skin's not doing kind of bizarre things. We know this model is working great. Good. So we can just hit done. Okay. So we've established that our model's being imported properly over here. And just to make sure that I've got the correct version of the soldier here, I think I do. I'm just going to delete that one and just drop it back in here again. Um, because if if I've saved this player controller, if I apply this, uh, this prefab, it's no longer going to be properly linked to this import exactly. So um, some things might go a little wonky. But in this case, we're, uh, we're going okay. Okay, so good. We've got our soldier in the world, and he's going to look fine. And I can run this game uh, just like before. Although I suppose I want to—I need to get rid of the guy who's actually in the world. But if I take a look at my player stuff resources, there he's clearly showing up properly right over here in this window. And if I save this and I do a build, again we'll make sure that it's working. Our people—they won't be animated. They'll be going around in that ridiculous T pose, but they should work. Let's let this connect over here. Same as always. Do, do, do. Okay, and then we're gonna go hit play over on this side, and then uh, whoa! Oh, all right. I think that's the reason there was some weirdness. We were we were standing on top of one another, but there we go. And if I back up over here like so, and then move myself over here, there we go. Hello! All right, good. Excellent. This is exactly what we're, we're hoping for. We sort of poke in the wall there just because the arms are sticking way outside of our capsule. But that's, the hell, that's kind of par for the course, to be honest. And it'll be mostly resolved by the fact that our guy won't be walking around like he's an airplane. Woo, I'm an airplane. Okay, 
I, I should probably end this video because I feel like I'm getting a little bit loopy. And uh, we will look at some basic animation stuff next time. Our guy will not have a full suite of animations, mostly because it's actually hard to find a lot of completely free animations out there for me to include in this tutorial. There are some great tutorial animations out there. And again, um, this, this motion pack really includes quite a lot, right? Check the, the, the strafe is there, the, the movement. Uh, does she have a run? No, she's got a cinematic turn. That's not, it's not looping, I think is the problem in this little viewer here, which is a shame. Um, I'm kind of curious how much this costs. I don't, I haven't actually bought anything on Mixmo yet. Uh, there, the basic shooter pack is 407 credits. And what does it include? I promise Mixmo hasn't paid me anything at all. They're not the only place to get animations, but they're really convenient, and they've been really dedicated at working with Unity. Um, so we've got that move. I can't just, like, hold it down, huh? Let's see. Oh, there's key controls. Really? Oh, cool. Move. Uh, can I run? Yes. All right. Sidestepping. Running sidestep. Nice. Uh, shoot. Yeah, there's a bit of a shooting animation. Oh, very cool. Oh, he's got a grenade throwing, too. Boom. All right, I like it. Uh, and just an eyeball. They're not cheap, right? They've got a few free things, but other than that, that's 400 and change, so free. We get, yeah, the 24 free characters. And the auto rigger, which I might talk about at some point in the future. And they've got 12 free motions, but they're crap. So, uh, pay as you go. So we can just buy credits as is. So if we wanted to enough for that pack, yeah, that pack was 400 and change. So we'd be spending, we basically need to buy the pro pack, get this many credits, and that would we'd use about half of them on that one pack. Not cheap, but you, I mean, if you're doing, you're trying to make something that's basically like a Counter-Strike game, you've got the vast majority of your animations already done. And normally they would take hours and hours and hours to do and to try to get right. Uh, and of course you can do the all access type of thing, um, which is $1,500 for the year, but it gives you all their characters, uh, all their animations, all their, well, as far as I know, I think everything is just like 100% just in there and there's the um, the built-in tool the built-in unity store and that's the thing if you go back into uh, unity over here what is this oh that's my other one if you go back in here one of the things if you search for mechanism on the asset store that's what I'm looking for like what am I what's the word um, if we search for mechanism here no not mechanism um, mixamo there we go the mixamo animation store it's, it's a free plugin, but basically what it does, it builds into Unity in one of the menus. There'll be a new menu in here. It'll just give you their site where you can quickly find things and access it. So, you know, if you're looking to be a professional developer, I gotta say, this is what I would be doing if I was interested in doing a pro uh, first-person shooter type thing or anything with, like, animated humanoids. There's a reason. Most of the games I'm interested in, no people. People are way too hard. So I just, I just, I can make little robot things or, you know, a little chest that open or something like that. Uh, but uh, people, people are tough. So anyway, that's it. When we come back, we will throw in a couple of basic animations into our game. And uh, we're going to go through the mechanism stuff. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.